billions of dollars that are spent annually by institutions and it's spent on um, diversity consultants and chief diversity officers and, and uh, you know, uh, climate surveys and anti-bias training and on and on. Billions of dollars invested year after year and each year, most of these institutions barely move the needle when it comes to hiring uh, people of color who, are, who remain radically underrepresented in every influential field in the United States. Now, you know, you're talking about needing people to become aware of the entire historical context of racism, right? And particularly, I think, when it comes to the treatment of Black and Indigenous peoples. Um, and I'm wondering where you see that fitting into, you know, corporate diversity training, or, you know, how can we have these conversations in a meaningful way at work? Right. And I, I and I think one of the things that, that um, hopefully, if, if there's any takeaway from my book where corporate leaders are concerned, is that they have to move beyond the whole project of changing hearts and minds that this anti-bias training is set up to do and that has shown not to do. <laughs> that is proven year after year. It does not move the needle. And we need to move past those attempts to the real interventions. Like instead of like trying to make people more comfortable with the notion of racial diversity, we've done that for 50 years. Either you are or you're not. But there are things that these institutions can do to actually realize diversity. And the, the irony is that the anti-bias training has been shown to kind of polarize the workplace, to make people even more resistant to diversity. The real answer to diversity and to the discomfort with diversity is diversity. It, you know, it's because people don't have a comfort level with people outside of their social spheres because of the racially segregated nature of American society, that it's only by having greater exposure to different people will you gain that comfort level that now is missing. And so diversity is the answer to that. And, and, you know, diversity, you know, all of the studies show that it improves innovation. It can increase the bottom line. It does so many other things, but it's also the right thing to do. I mean, we live mm -hmm. in a, a diverse society and we cannot normalize the exclusion of 40% of the population from all of these fields. I mean, there's no justification for it, but um, you know, this summer we saw numerous uh, Fortune 500 CEOs um, issue statements mm -hmm. saying Black Lives Matter, something that was unthinkable when I sat down to write Diversity Inc. But it still just works. So you know, the proof will be in the pudding. I think I I think there is a far far greater awareness and far greater scrutiny going forward. And another thing that kind of encourages me is that young people now seem a lot more um, um, selective about the companies mm -hmm. and institutions they choose to align with. And if you want the best and brightest, I think this is something that is now being considered you know, what kind of workplace do you have? How inclusive is it? Is, you know, is there diversity? It's something I hear from my students now that was not something that mm -hmm. people considered in my generation, how diverse, uh, you know, um, a workplace was. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I just think that um, this is part of, of the whole um, justice agenda. It's, it's not limited to police reform. It's not, you know, I think diversity, when we talk about diversity, we have to talk about it within the context of justice, because that's all we're talking about. We're talking about equality and justice, where it, that's really what it comes down to. Okay.